was a great, you know, the scores were level, you know, played the first term. 20 places come through and spoil it and set up for Ann Dallas for a, for a goal to show that this eye was, was really there. Yeah, I think so. We're probably a little bit disappointed with the way we played the first quarter. We didn't think defensively we're as good as what we could have been. But I think, I think the great thing about our, our play today and probably over the last couple of weeks has just been the even performance of a number of guys, which is really pleasing for us. And you know, we've still got a lot of areas that we need to improve, uh, but we're certainly tracking in the right direction. You're getting such a even spread out. It is, you know, look, Aaron Edwards stepped up today, as did Ty and Jack, and they all had solid contributions. And then I think Jacko kicked three goals also. So, you know, I think the good sides certainly show that they have a capable spread of goal kickers. And, and every now and then a guy will jump out of the box and kick four or five. But um, we've been pleased with that aspect. More importantly, we've been pleased with the way our midfielders have distributed the ball inside 50 as well, not just kicking a one target. Um, so it's certainly, you know, Mark Williams, as our, as our forward coach, has done a and truck a lot of work with those guys. Tony, um, um, Wayne Carey on Triple M is really raving about Edwards' game. And just that different, just that little bit extra element that he gives, gives to your attack and marketing power? Yeah, he does. He certainly provides a different target to, to Jack and Ty. We certainly think with all three of those players, we've certainly got a different you know, a, a attacking force, I suppose you'd say. He's been outstanding since he's come to our footy club. He's certainly had to earn his game. You know, he's been in terrific form at VFL level, but, but as you said, he's certainly got an aspect that we, we don't have in our forward structure that we certainly enjoy. Has he been a surprise at all? Uh, Aaron's form? No, I think you know one thing our recruiting guys, you know Francis and Blair, do pretty well is they, they look for talent they think can complement us. Um, look, he certainly came in as a as a guy that we know will help us for a period of time. You know, Aaron's 29. He tells me he's got the body of a 22 year old, but um, he's a player that plays his role and he's playing it particularly well. That's your seventh game back. You must be really just tracking nicely. Body's obviously a good bit final. Yep. Yeah, it is. It um, took a little bit to get going, but getting some continuity in training and playing, and I uh, feel like I'm slowly improving week to week. Yeah, I think his last three have been very good. It's hard to sort of say off the off the cuff, but. You know, he, you've got to remember he missed a large chunk of last year, so it was always going to take a period of time. But I think his last three weeks we've been really pleased with. And, and just in terms of what you're trying to build to, and if you know, in September, you know, as the obvious goal, the mid and depth, and just you know, it's undoubted ability, just the importance of what he's shown you. Yeah, I think, as we said before, you know, Nathan's a, a part of that, that midfield depth that we speak about that can go through various areas of the ground. And, you know, some stages on the wing will be half forward, he'll be half back. I don't think he played half back tonight, but um, the flexibility it gives us is, is enormous. And I think, you know, you look at the, the quality of the sides that are they're certainly above us still, Geelong, Hawthorne, all these players, they've got depth at those positions. And it's something we're developing. You know, we're still a fair way off those sides. Um, but we certainly think we're, we've got the calibre of players that will make us better over a period of time. Matthew, you said it was made a few weeks ago about Richmond winning the game to win. Coming back here, does it sort of feel that way to you now? Yeah, I think the um, consistency has just improved over four quarters. We just sort of, um, like Timmy just said, we've got a real even spread and everyone's just playing their role. And um, yeah, over four quarters, the level of consistency has just proved, uh, improved. That's been probably the biggest notice. You feel like you to win. Um, oh look, yeah, in a way you sort of go into a game hoping that um, that's going to be the case, but you sort of just play your role and um, that's all you can really do. Is that a game like people like last season, started in the first quarter, they were really taking it up to you? It might have been in trouble, but this year it's just a sign of your improvement that you, know, you can change the way you do things and you can change up the way you play. Yeah, I think so. Probably credit goes to the players on the field. They certainly knew what was happening. You know, we made a couple of conversations on the bench there that, that came up and we just to make a couple of adjustments to, to get that right. But you know, the quality sides is, you know, the sides above us I spoke about before, the players make a lot of the changes on field and can read the cues relatively quickly. And, and that's what we're getting now. You know, Trent, Brett, these type of players make, make decisions a lot quicker than what we as coaches can. No doubt. The, the more you put them through those situations, uh, the more times they experience it, the better they're going to get at, at making quick judgment calls. And you know, the the great thing about our our leaders is they're still relatively young. 
Um, so we, we certainly got some scope from improvement in that area. The guys will learn more as they progress through the ranks, but um, you know, they've done a truckload of work to improve in that area, and I think they're, they're ticking a lot of boxes at this stage. Can you readjust your goals, ladder-wise? To win next week? That's all we do. <laughs> End of the day, it's a... Whatever happens, happens. We've just got to worry about playing playing our best footy consistently. I still think even today, you know, our first quarter was disappointing. So the consistency of our footy club is what's m most important for us. So, you know, we've got a, a team next week. I'm not sure what North won by today, but they're a long way ahead of quarter time. And, you know, if they play their best footy, they're capable of beating any side in the AFL. So we'll come out and, you know, try and nullify that and, and get our game up and going. So it's going to be a good game. 1-4 on the trot. Do you think the performance has been getting better? Not sure about better. I think they've been consistent. Um, the thing we we sort of speak about is I think last year we tended to to blow sides out and then probably lose that lead a little bit. I think the thing that we're doing a lot better is we're playing a more consistent brand of footy where you know it'd be three goals, five goals, seven goals. You win by nine. So that's from our point of view a sign of I think the group has matured. They know when to take risks, when to actually play within themselves, and you know once again experiencing that we think we're. You know, we're tracking OK in that area. Big test will be next uh, next Saturday night, I think that game is. So, mm. um, Loston will be available. Asprey will be available. Uh, Big Ivy will wait, wait and see how that one pans out. Um, I think there were only three guys that, that missed on the weekend. Who was the late withdrawal? No, Loston, yeah, so... Yeah, it was from last week. He just got a cork in his shin. So, listen, if, if he wasn't a first-year player, he probably could have played. But we're not going to risk a, a player who thinks he's going to be a valuable contributor to our footy club. Jake, right. Jake. King, yeah, he was fine. Um, he's just one of those ones. He's a, he's a warrior, wear and tear sort of thing. So he's got his um, his 100th, I think, is next week. So I made sure I spoke to him on the phone, not anyone else, because I thought he'd go berserk at someone. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I saw that red vest, I thought he was going to punch whoever gives it to him. Uh, listen, he's fine. We just want to make sure he, he battles on. He's such a tough competitor and, and guy we love playing with. Thanks, guys. Thank